Are you guys still having a problem with psychic decks? If so, we may have a solution. What's good? It's your boy Rico. Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Duel. Today is Monday. It's my day off. I got to play some other games and we're back into Pokemon Duel, okay? Uh, the team match event is over. How did you guys do? Let's take a look at the final results. I haven't even looked. <clears throat> haven't even. Well, I played two games last night, but after that, it took. I think I, did, I didn't even play it on the final day. Final results is. Oh, look at that, Dialga. We came in. Oh, just kidding. We came in third. So that means I do not get any Carmenite. <clears throat> However take a look at the achievement rewards I played a total of five duels four wins and I got 2,000 points 2,055 to be exact and I got the EX cube so we are going to add that I think I have two EX cubes we're going to add that to my septile because my septile is almost chain level 10 um, we also have a gold booster so let's go ahead and pop that hopefully we can get something good <clears throat> and show me gold light nope we just got blue just an uncommon Duosian Machop, okay. Ooh, got a rare metal EX. That's nice. Um, <clears throat> but things are kind of slow in Pokemon Duel right now. We are going to be having a gym hopefully sometime during next week, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. But for now, we have the Silver Moon Hall. And I actually haven't even played these halls in a long, long, long time. Like when they first came out, I was playing them a lot just get the carbonite but now i'm getting plenty of carbonites um but let's go ahead and i just want to talk about uh the video that we are going to be showing featuring the one and only jake razor now i know he is currently working on some footage for us in regards of the zorok but until then let's take a look at the deck that he has comp composed together and he calls it the the metal toolbox so let's kind of talk about the figures real quick uh He's got, you need a Cobalion and a second steel uh, figure. The other steel figure, obviously, is going to be um, Solgaleo, because Solgaleo is a, such a versatile figure. Uh, and the plates that are really for the core of this is the Metal Sphere and the Steel Energy. It's going to give us 20 total, so if Solgaleo is going to be at 140 plus 120, so the attackers are going to be Cobalion and Solgaleo. Uh, the lock, which is going to be the Tapu Lele, Tapu Lele is good because it's got the gold immunity and it's got the plus on the star. So the Tapu Lele and the Cobalion is just going to be really, really good for the next part, which is the tools, the three status condition inducers okay now he's rocking three stabilized now i know a lot of us do not have three stabilized i would personally like to have three stabilized i've seen people run three stabilized especially k-dub in the gen 3 tournament but any three status inducers really you can be size and total polyrath uh tapu fini as a support figure we can use dratini suicune so i mean that's kind of the gist of it so jake has given us three games and what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in and we're gonna watch these games and see how they go. So take a look at this. The opponent has the traditional psychic deck. He's got the Oracorio, he's got two Nala's, DOA, and he's got the interesting Heatran. I don't know how that synergizes with this deck, but uh, look at Jake's deck. Lele, Cobalion, Galio, and three save less. All right, guys, so we're gonna jump in right now. <clears throat> Looks like Jake goes first, I think. So the thing here that I immediately noticed is that Jake is not rocking a runner. He does, however, have the dark energy. So any psychic mons that do take out uh, Jake's Sableyes um, are sent directly to the bench, not the PC. Uh, so Jake is going to open up running both energies, dark energy, steel energy. Okay, so now the opponent moves up with Lunala, which I don't agree with. I would probably move up. I honestly think I would move up with Heatran. I mean, look, he's got a threat. There's three Sableyes here. Yeah. So, oh, interesting. Uh, Jake could do a lot of options here. I would probably, yeah, I think defensive would be the best strategy here. Does he take, what's he gonna, oh, okay. This guy's being super aggressive with this Nala. So Jake obviously is going to take the entry point, and I don't know what the opponent is going to do here. I would take the entry point, um, since he's already this overextended, but I'm not sure what he's going to do. Oh, the X speed. Actually, yeah, this is the right player. I didn't even know he had an X speed. This could be bad for Jake, actually. 
because then he's gonna have to gold block. Yeah, well, I, I guess he'd gold block. Oh, he's got the majority into Moon Guy's Beam, and that's what happens when you put the majority of your Carbonite into Moon, Sky, Moon Guy's Beam, and you're using the X Speed. I would reevaluate that if you're gonna be X Speed heavy with the Lunala. I think you should invest in putting all of the Carbonite into the Psychic. So Lunala needs to get out there. Um, unfortunately, Jake does have the Phantom Energy, so I don't think he... Yeah, he didn't play that yet, so he's probably going to play it and threaten the surround. So the Lunala still needs to... The, the opponent's kind of behind in turns. Jake is, like, fully set up. So the opponent does need to move the Lunala. Probably moves it... Oh, mistakes, my friend. 3.3, man. you got to be aware of what the Phantom Energy can do. And there goes Lunala. I didn't even see what change that what how many chains it had, or the DOA too. So okay, moves up Combuskin probably puts the other Sableye over, or not the old, uh, not the other Sableye, but that Sableye, because he's not really threatened by this DOA. He's got the Sableye that can hit it. No, oh, he's gonna. Interesting. This is not it's not a favorable matchup. I don't know what Jake invested on this Sableye though, so we'll see. Okay, and he got the confusion. Right? That is the winning roll. The opponent does need to hit the Cyclone Kick just to negate the Confuse Ray. And he hits the Weak Spot Kick. Dude, I get so angry when my Combuskins hit the Weak Spot Kick twice. Like, it, uh, it pisses me off more than anything. Oh, and by the way, I'm in the kitchen right now because McKenna is cooking and sweeping and she wanted me to spend time with her. So, this is how we spend time, huh, baby? All right, starts, defense, starts backing up with Nala. And this is a good, so I think he, yeah, he used, wait, did he use a Metal Sphere? I don't know if Jake used a Metal Sphere yet. But that DOA is what, plus, I don't know what he is, plus, I don't even know what his chains are. I should definitely be paying attention to that. X attack. I, this opponent is up playing very unconventionally. Like, you, yeah, you're confused. Like, I don't... You had to rely on hitting a miss there, so... I don't know about that. So now he's burnt. So now the Cyclone Kick is completely gone. The opponent is... is I don't know. I wouldn't bring on the Heat Run, really. It's a risk. Okay, <laughs> I guess he's just trying to sack his... Uh, Combuskin. Does. Oh yeah, dude, and that's a, the annoying thing about three stabilize. <laughs> You're minus three. It prolongs the game, in my opinion, because it just takes forever for it to, uh, like, subtract the three damage. And the good thing about this deck here that Jake's playing against is not a Zapdos. He doesn't have to worry about um, a heavy gold attackers that are that would absolutely destroy the stabilize. He's gonna try and attack. Ooh, he does get the magma slide. Very nice. Looks like he decides not to attack there. I mean, he doesn't necessarily need to attack. Probably just jumps over, takes entry point, or moves Lele. I would probably take entry point, yeah. Ooh, and then, yeah, then I would definitely attack the Oricorio because he does get the plus stars from the Tapu Lele. Nice. Good neutral turn here. He, the DOA does not want to respin him. Probably moves on from the left side. Yep, goes after that core or Corio. He gets the plus star. So you can either confuse him or hopefully get the gold. He does get the gold into purple, and that is pretty much GG boys. DOA and the Lunala can't really do much against uh Sableye here. Now, all Jake has to do is survive this roll. Pretty much has a 67% chance of surviving it. Oh, and he gets the miss. Wow, that's a little unfortunate.
but it only takes him to the bench because he's got the dark energy. Probably advances with uh, Solgaleo. Yep. Bring the other Sableye on, maybe? Yeah, okay. Wait, what was that DOA added again? I forgot, I didn't see. Oh, here we go, goal. Oh, nice, good roll. So Lele's knocked or moved away uh, Sableye's gold. Ooh, with the 140. Oh wow, he's only at 130, so there's zero change on this DOA. Interesting. Yep, that, that's, wait, does the opponent have gold block? He does have gold block. So move Sableye back. And then, ooh, this could be some, this could be troublesome because the opponent's going to move Combuskin on. So if I was, uh, does he move Lele in front of Sableye? Oh, the other Sableye tool. I didn't even see that one right there. So yeah, that is very good to protect the uh, Solgaleo because Solgaleo does not have a good matchup against the... Oh, nice. Uh, Combuskin. And yeah, he doesn't have to worry about it. I totally negated the fact that the other Sableye was on the entry point. So now he can take the entry point with Solgaleo. He needs to hope to land on Magma Slide to... Oh, wow! And he hits the miss? Wow. Wow. What a fortunate roll for the opponent there. Yep. Yeah, Sableye wrecks all three of those guys. So he's going to take the entry point. And then maybe start moving up the other... Oh, he's attacking. It's pretty much GG boys here. The... Yeah. The only thing the opponent can rely on is this heat ramp, but the heat ramp is confused, so... Wow, and he lands on double misses. Wow. This heat round's like my Zapdos. So heat round's gone. Oh, he's not gonna take out the heat round. I would take out the heat round and then move Sableye to take the entry point. That's what I would have done. But I, I mean, at the same time, yeah, the heat round's pretty much useless. I guess he didn't want to move with the Sableye because... I mean, he did He did have the other Sableye up there because he could have taken the entry point, but I guess he just wanted to keep the pressure uh, on with having the majority of his mons on his on the opponent's side of the board. Doesn't necessarily need to attack because in the event something bad does happen, the DOA does come on, so I agree with that play by not attacking there. Oh, the opponent does have the... He does have the switch though, so he's not safe yet. I would start moving up on the right side, in my opinion, because he, he could switch the DOA with the Nala. Well, actually, Nala has a better matchup against the. Uh, so, Ga oh wow, he gets the Moongrass Beam. But it's okay because the Sableye is there for insurance, and we all know Sableye can't do much against Lunala. Again, doesn't need to attack. Can slowly start moving up Lele. Can slowly start moving up everything. But I would start with Lele. 
in the event that Sableye does not survive uh, the second turn. So I'm assuming he's going to survive this turn, which he does. So I'll move up Lele just in the event somehow um, Lunala takes him out. I mean, Lunala hits the Moongrass Beam and Sableye hitting a miss. Now he's full and switch. Very good play here. But again, Sableye. Dude, Sableye counters so many mods. Like, unless you're going up against Zapdos, Zapdos, it counters so many mods. Meta mods, actually. Wait, is his dodge increased? It looked like his dodge was slightly increased. Maybe not. I don't know. This could be scary. Nice. Confused DOA, absolutely useless. So wait, that Lala is status, right? So can't, can't that Lele attack him and if he hits the purple, does it KO him? Or no, it's only if it's weight, right? Very good. And that is pretty much all she wrote. GG boys to the opponent. I think I would have attacked there. But that is why he did not attack. That's a good play. Uh, doesn't need attack here. Then the Orko needs to move back. Moves up Lele and then brings in Sableye. Like I said, GG boys. We can move on to episode or uh, game number two right after this one. Oh, the Heat Ran though. The Heat Ran though. I forgot about him. Alright, next game, I hope to see uh, scarier DOAs. I want to see 140 DOAs. Chain 10, Nala's. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, there's, okay, there's a 10 Nala, 10 Combuskin. We have Mewtwo, I'm assuming it's a Mewtwo Y. I'm, dude, I'm, I wish, I don't think I've ever seen anyone have Mewtwo X. I haven't, I really want to see Mewtwo X with the Coco combo. All right, Jake's gonna start off with Steel Energy. Okay, so we do have the Gengar Coco Rush. Let's see how Jake responds to this. this is, that is the correct play. Be defensive at first, because <clears throat> you know that Gengar is probably not going to make Evolve here. He's probably just going to move up two spaces. Uh, I think that's a waste of a turn. I honestly think that's a, or a waste of a play. All you got to do is move up twice, then Jake has to cover the entry point because he would Mega Evolve to win, and then he just automatically takes the entry point with the Gengar. Doesn't waste the plate yet, so I think, I don't know. I think that's a waste of play early on. Because now you basically have to attack here. I mean, do you have the X speed? Yeah, I would have I would have only Mega if you had the X speed there. But yeah, now it's just a waste. And look, that Coco can't do anything. Lele blocks him off. And his Mega's already gone. Because now he just brings up Sableye. Good response on the early rush. Listen. This isn't necessarily... Like, Toad used to be a problem, but like this is like a steel... A half... Well, there's two steel... The attackers on this deck are steel mons. And... Uh, Sableye doesn't care about being poisoned. So I actually do not like v -Nons. I don't like his matchup against Jake's team. So I think the Metasphere is the only thing we haven't played, right? I don't attack. I, I mean, 
mean, I don't know why. It's there's there's really no point in attacking him. Oh, maybe for Gengar though. Maybe for Gengar. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I, okay. It's okay. I think. There's a the phantom energy. Yeah, I think I think that's what the opponent needs to do. I would yeah attack the other one. Okay, good. So now, V not has some sort of chance uh, with that Gengar because of Gengar's ability. So this next play, I would move up the Gengar right next to the Sableye. My Coco never lands attacks when I try and attack with him. I don't know about that. I would have moved up Gengar to force Jake to move the Sableyes. Well, you got to be wary of those standard attacks when you have a Mon in the center, on the outside of the center, and you're matched up against another Mon. You always put something on your entry point that matches up well with them, and if the opponent doesn't move forward or back him up, then the opponent's going to put him in a bad position, which he does have the Sableye. On that, uh... So now if I was Jake, I would just jump over the Nala, force the Mewtwo onto the goal, Or that, I totally forgot Lele you can go through months. That works too. Because now he has to gold block. Who are you going to gold block with though? Oh, the opponent's got Phantom Energy too. Interesting. Yeah, I, I do not know why the opponent hasn't done it. He hasn't been active at all with the Gengar. While Jake has two poison bombs. <laughs> yeah. And now he beats the opponent basically has to mega evolve. Use me to Y and hope that the Lele does not hit the uh so blue. I guess he's attacking with Nala too, but that's GG boys, boom. Yeah, early on, why not? I believe it would have been more beneficial if you would have utilized Gengar's ability early on when you had chances. That was a good win. Oh! Is this... Oh, just kidding. It's not a mirror match because Jake is on the opposing side. See, the opponent here... Ooh, he's got two Mewtwo's. Okay, so we have the standard Coco Rush, Coco Gengar Rush, move Sableye on the right side, probably. Yep. So now the opponent, if, if I was the opponent, I would just move very smart. So now Jake takes the goal, Gengar takes the entry point. Uh, way more effective. Rafiki! Like, Rafiki from Lion King? Probably plays it, yeah. Mm. Sableye to counter because the opponent is threatened to Mega Evolve. Mewtwo Y, take the entry point. So I believe Jake will probably move up Sableye. Yep. Probably just moves the other. Okay, moves Cobalion. Very smart because the opponent is what he's doing. If I was the opponent, I would move up Mewtwo two more spaces. 
And then I would have tried to take out the Sableye with my Mega Mewtwo Y. I would have evolved and hoped for my gold, but Jake is smart by putting in the Cobalion right next to the Sableye. He already saw that ahead. Very good thinking there. Ooh, so he does get the winning roll here, but Jake's not that... Jake's next play is he has to move the Cobalion right next to the uh, Sableye, but then the opponent takes the entry point. He doesn't attack, so the opponent DCs here. Yeah, should DC and go straight for the Sableye. This could be bad news for Jake. Oh, no. No, 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 no. That is not who you want to attack. No, dude, you could have won. He KOs him, but now you're burnt? All you had to do was... DC, go for the Sableye. Jake would have had to gold block or move the Cobalion onto the entry point. Then you could have just taken the entry point with Mewtwo. Why? Mewtwo would have been in a great position to Psy Shock the Cobalion, and you still have the Mega Plate for Gengar. So I think that was a misplay there. And he's doing it again, dude. No, you got it. You gotta go for Sableye there, in my opinion. Yeah, because now you're burned. Even if you do take the entry point, you're Misplays, man. Opportunities. I thought. I think that was a huge misplay, in my opinion. Okay, so now he's covering Sableye, which I agree with. But I think that I think there was two misplays there. Uh, one by Jake by bringing. Up, well, I don't know, but I definitely think the opponent definitely should have went after the uh, Sableye. Look how, many, look how many times he's hit the hypersonic, man. Now this might just be a back and forth attacking. But by the, I mean, I don't know. Jake's gonna be able to fully set up now. It's too late, man. It's too late. Cobalion's there. It doesn't matter if you hit the hypersonic now. It's too late, man. Waste of DCs, waste, waste of Mega Mewtwo, my friend. Jake, you did survive the rush. I think there was some misplays there uh, by the opponent. Once one minor one by Jake, but he was fine. Fully aware of what's happening. Lose Cobalion next to the Sableye, so the other opponent, Sableye, cannot attack his Sableye and hit his gold into purple because it won't matter. This, however, is a good matchup. Wait, did Jake attack there? Wow, hit his gold. Or the opponent? Wait, did the opponent or Jake? Whose turn is it? Okay, it's Jake's turn, so the opponent did. Okay. So now Jake can hop over with his Sableye. I think that's the play to make. 
right? Very good. Did he attack? Ooh. He's playing the Phantom Energy. Is he going to attack? So if he played Phantom Energy, he needs to attack the other side. Like, I don't know, man. This could be interesting here. to attack here because he is fearing that quick attack from Coco. He has to he has to hit this roll. Oh when he does. Nice. Nice on the opponent. Let's see how Jake can recover from this. Two points are taken. There's nothing that's status condition. He doesn't have a ghost on the bench. The opponent here just needs to be. Well, it's gonna be hard to take out a Sableye though. The Sableye next with the Cobalion. It's gonna be very difficult for the opponent to do anything. Oh wow. Wait, does he even have Mega Gengar? I would, I mean, at this point, I get you kind of have to attack and hopefully you hit your white into his gold. That's the, yeah, I agree. Doesn't matter. Cobalion's right next to him. Wait, Jake won that roll, right? Yeah. Things are looking okay. Well, I mean, the punk does have both Mewtwo's back on. Oh, and he still has the Recycle Plate. So... But yeah, I don't know how the opponent's gonna uh, deal with the Sableye um, Cobalion. Opportunity was wasted. Uh, yep, I would just move up the Sable or the Sargalio. Fun is probably gonna Mega Evolve or. Uh, you better hope he lands on the Wisp. If Jake lands on the Wisp and he gets his purple, that'd be good. Oh, wow. Wow. Really good roll for the opponent. However, I think Jake still has gold block and he can just bring his other Sableye there. Yep.
All right, now this this matchup's uh, he has to attack here. The matchup's kind of eh. I believe it's kind of like a coin flip. Well, let's see what happens. Wow, and he gets the white on white. Wow. I don't know if the opponent has goal block, but now the opponent just has to hope this Mewtwo can win this roll. If oh wow. <laughs> and Jake gets the roll, and he gets the win, and that is GG Boys. So this deck is doing pretty well. The opponent could have won, though. Opponent could have won. But good game, Rafiki. Um, so yeah, we're going to cut it there. I believe that's three games split. That's all we had. Um, if you guys are still having problems with the Psychic decks, maybe try this out. Three status conditions, Cobalion plus another Steel Figure, preferably uh, Solgaleo, and the Tapu Lele. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, peace.